great joy at the birth of your children, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has brought you to the church to give thanks to God for the gift of your children and to celebrate a new birth in the waters of baptism. This community rejoices with you, for today, the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased. And we offer you our support in raising your children in the practice of the faith. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us now prepare ourselves to participate in this celebration, listening to God's word, praying for these children and their families, and renewing our commitment to the Lord and to his people. And so I ask the parents, and what do you ask of God's church for Maverick? Baptist. What do you ask of God's church for Maverick? Parents, what name have you given your child? And what do you ask of God's church for Arthur? In asking for baptism, you are undertaking the responsibility of raising them in the faith, so that keeping God's commandments, they may love the Lord and their neighbor as Christ has taught us. Parents, do you understand this responsibility? Yes. Parents, do you understand this responsibility? Godparents, are you ready to help the parents of these children in your the Godparents, are you ready to help the parents of these children in their dreams? Dear children, the Church of God receives you with great joy. In her name, I sign you with the sign of the cross of Christ our Savior, and then after me, your parents and godparents will do the same. So parents, go ahead and trace the sign of the cross on the child's forehead. Parent and godparents. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. He came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you are doing unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born from above, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man, once grown old, be born again? Surely he cannot re-enter his mother's womb and be born again, can he? Jesus answered, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is born of flesh is flesh, and what is born of spirit is spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Please be seated. One of the cool things they teach us in deacon school is that when we're presiding, we can do what we want. More or less, we have to follow the rites. But... Every time, I mean, if anybody's been to a wedding like this, wedding, 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 you know, the bride and the groom, they're either standing or kneeling. That's it. They don't get to sit down. So I usually go over to the beautiful bride and I say, sweetheart, I've got a five minute homily and a 25 minute homily. <laughs> Which one do you want? <laughs> I always say I that. <laughs> so who attended my baptism seminar? Anybody? 
Okay, you don't get to answer any questions. <laughs> but let me go over here first. So who over here, y'all knew there was a test, right? There you go. Okay, who over here can give me an example of water anywhere in the old town? Old oh, you said old. <laughs> um, the ark. What about the ark? The flood. The flood. So what was up with Noah and the ark? God wanted to hit the reset button on humanity. It had become so sinful, he said, I'm starting all over again. But he found in Noah and his family eight righteous people to help continue the salvation story. So we all know that part. Noah builds an ark and brings an all uh, example of all of creation. Great chance to get rid of mosquitoes, but he didn't, okay? And it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights, okay? There are little children in vacation Bible school singing, Father Noah built an ark, and the animals go in two by two. Nobody knows that part. We know after 40 days, Noah goes out on the deck, plays a little shuffleboard, releases a dove, and eventually it comes back with an olive branch, which means that the waters had receded. So everybody remembers that part, right? But there's a part in there that we tend to forget. And that was because when it rained for 40 days and for 40 nights, God killed all the rest of humanity. So in the Old Testament, water is seen as a, a sign of death, of purging, of cleansing. Okay? Let me go this side. Can y'all give me another example of water in the Old Testament? Parting of the Red Sea. Parting of the Red Sea, exactly. So now some people here might get this, and some people might not. But when I get to heaven, Moses had better look like Charlton Heston. <laughs> I don't know if Pharaoh made it. I don't know his part. But if he's hanging around, he better look like Eagle Brennan. <laughs> And for those of you who don't understand what Deacon Owen is talking about, back in the late 50s, there was a movie called The Ten Commandments. And the actor who played uh, Moses was Charlton Heston, and the actor who played Pharaoh was Ewell Brenner. And every year for my entire life, I have watched that movie. Every year. Okay. But what happens? Pharaoh goes to Moses. I mean, Moses goes to Pharaoh. And he says, let my people go so they can go into the desert and worship God at your command. And what did Pharaoh say? Yes or no? No. Pharaoh said no. He said no nine times. And we had all those plays. We had the locusts and the river turns and blood and the frogs and all of those plays. But it wasn't until the tenth play the killing of the firstborn of both man and beast, that Passover, where the Israelites had to slaughter a lamb and put the blood on the lentil of the door so it would be passed over. Most, um, Pharaoh said, get out of here. So they go out into the desert, and they come up to what? The Red Sea. They don't know what to do. Oh, and Pharaoh has changed his mind. He wants his Israelites back. He wants his slaves back. So he goes out there with his entire army to go get them back. So God has put a pillar of fire behind them, think the Holy Spirit, to protect them. But they don't know what to do. they got this Red Sea, so they pray. And God tells Moses, stretch out your arms with your staff. And we read that God divides the Red Sea, and it's like a wall on the left and a wall on the right. And we read that the Israelites walk dry shod through the Red Sea. Everybody knows that part. Okay? But there's a little piece after that. God knew that Pharaoh was obstinate. And Pharaoh sends his entire army into the midst of the Red Sea to go get the, his Israelites back. And what does God do? He releases the waters and kills Pharaoh's entire army. Like that. So again, Water is a sign of purging, of death, cleansing. So the Israelites wander around in the desert for 40 years, and they end up at the River Jordan. Okay? 
Why did it take them 40 years? It's only about a six week journey. Anybody know? My wife says, well, Moses was a man, so he didn't stop and ask for directions. <laughs> Me, I'm an engineer. I just don't think he had a good enough GPS system. <laughs> but he wanders around and they end up at the River Jordan and we know exactly where that spot is, okay? Because the ruins of Jericho are on the other side. Did Moses take the Israelites into the Promised Land? No, no, he died before they went over into the Promised Land. Who did take them into the Promised Land? Joshua. Joshua. And then Joshua was his military commander. These were military campaigns. Going into Jericho, going into the Promised Land, wasn't like moving into the new neighborhood, okay? These were military campaigns. And if you ever read the first four or five, six cities, God told the Israelites to put them to the sword. And what that means is they went in there and they killed every man, woman, child, animal, burned all the crops, destroyed all the buildings. God wanted that place wiped off the face of the earth. Why? All of those initial towns and the ones around them worship Baal. Baal, they often made human sacrifices, especially children. And God didn't want his people exposed to that at all. It didn't work out later, but you know, they tried. Okay. So here we have Joshua, the River Jordan, taking the people into the promised land. Okay. Get ready for the, the second part of the text. We go back over here. Can y'all give me an example of water in the New Testament? Water to wine. Water into <laughs> wine. There you go. There you go. So what was that going on? Well, we believe that the family of the wedding, the bride, of the groom anyway, were friends of Mary. Okay? And they were invited into the wedding. Because these were big affairs and they lasted for days. And the groom was responsible for bringing the wine, okay? And at the, at the festival was a steward, a wine master, there's all kind of words for it, but he was in charge. And every once in a while, he would command, give everyone a cup of wine, and they would toast to Yahweh, or toast to the, uh, God. And then a little while, a couple hours later, they give everybody a cup of wine, and they would toast to the couple. A couple hours later, they do the same thing and toast that they'd be blessed with children. This would go on for days, so you can imagine, it's a lot of wine that they're going through. Now, we got Mardi Gras coming up. we got the Super Bowl coming up. Can you imagine going to a party in Louisiana and you run out of alcohol? And you can't run down to Total Wine or Twister Pacey's, you know? So why do we think they were friends of Mary? Because Mary noticed that they were running out of wine. And she did not want the groom and his family to be embarrassed. So she goes to her son and says, son, they're running out of wine. And Jesus gives what's kind of a smart aleck answer to me. <laughs> he goes, woman, what does this have to do with me? My time has not yet come. Now, if I would have said that to Mrs. Francis when I was a young man, she would have went, I told you that they're running out of wine, and I want you to go fix it. But that's not what Mary said. What does Mary say? And these are the last words we hear from Mary in all of Scripture. She turns to the servants, disciples, whatever, and says, do whatever he tells you. And of course we know that the servants filled the stone jars completely to the brim with water and Jesus Christ changes it into wine. But not just like a decent box wine. He changes it into the choicest of wine. So good that when they brought it to the steward he complimented the groom on having such a fine wine. And that was not usually the custom later on in the party. Sounds like a good homily for a wedding. Right? Who so can give me another example of water in the New Testament over here? New Testament, water. I don't know. It's pierced. Okay, right. Right up here on the cross. 
After Jesus died, and the Roman soldier saw that he was dead, he pierced his side with a sword, and water and blood comes out. And that was the beginning of the church. I'll give you one, the woman at the water at the well. I am the living water, she tells her, that will never run dry. And she was the greatest evangelist ever. She converted her entire village that Jesus Christ was the Messiah. Jesus Christ is changing this image of water or something of death to something that gives life. Another example of water in the New Testament. At the beginning of Jesus' ministry, his cousin John is baptizing where? At the River Jordan. The exact same place where the Israelites crossed over into the Promised Land. You can go Google Earth that spot. It is the lowest elevation on the planet. The lowest elevation on the planet. So here's Jesus being baptized. Did Jesus need to be baptized? No. Why was he baptized? Two things. One, to show how he wanted to do the will of the Father. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him, or do what he tells you. And the second one was to bless the waters of baptism. So connected with death was baptism, that in the early church, baptismal fonts were shaped as coffins. And you were dying with Christ, and you were rising out of the waters of baptism, just like he rose in his resurrection. So do y'all see what I'm showing you? In the Old Testament, the exact same spot. We have Joshua taking the Israelites across into the Promised Land. Oh, another question. What was Jesus' real name? Hoshua, or Joshua. The exact same name as the Joshua in the Old Testament. Jesus comes from a transliteration of a Greek translation. Why do we use it? So we can tell them apart. But it's the exact same name. Joshua. Joshua in the Old Testament takes the Israelites into the promised land. And Jesus, Joshua of the New Testament, takes the people of God from the river Jordan where he got baptized into the kingdom of God. And for the rest of Jesus' ministry, he says, the kingdom of God is like this. Kingdom of God is like that, a pearl of great price, a treasure found in a field, a coin found by a woman in a house. Baptism is a sacrament. It's the first of sacraments. It's the first sacrament of Christian initiation, the other two being Eucharist and confirmation. So confirmation means when they turn 16 and they go, Mom... Why do I have to go to confirmation classes? Deacon Owen is so boring. <laughs> you're going to say you're not done yet. You're not done until you're confirmed. And what does Eucharist mean? Bring them to church every Sunday. Who can tell me how many holy days of obligation there are? Eight. Anybody? Eight. Eight. A lot of times people say seven, eight. No, 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 no. Those are the extra ones. Every Sunday is a holy day of obligation. Say that with me. Every, Every Sunday, Sunday is a holy, holy day, day of obligation. obligation. And if we miss Mass, except for a grave reason, it is a sin. So God has given you this little soul to take care of. And you just promised me a little while ago that as parents, you're going to do everything you can to raise them in the faith. And probably the number one thing that you can do is show them the example of going to church. And God, parents, you promised you would help them. So if you see that they're not going to church, you call them up. Hey, let's go to church. I'll take you to lunch after. Okay? Everybody with me? Yes, Father. Say yes, Deacon. Yes, Deacon. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Please stand. Dear brothers and sisters, let us invoke the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ for these children about to receive the grace of baptism and for their parents and godparents and all the baptized. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. 
Give these children new birth and baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection, and join them to your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear her. Make them faithful disciples and witnesses to your gospel through baptism and confirmation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lead them through holiness of life to all the joys of the heavenly kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make their parents and godparents a shining example of the faith to these children. We we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep their families always in your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Renew the grace of baptism in each of us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. After each invocation, please say, pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for, pray for us. us. St. John the Baptist, pray, pray for us. St. Joseph, pray, pray for us. us. St. Peter and St. Paul, pray, pray for us. St. Maverick, pray, pray for us. St. Luke, pray, pray for us. St. Arthur, pray, pray for us. St. Charles, pray, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, pray, pray for us. This next prayer is a prayer of exorcism and anointing. This exorcism is where I remove, I, I pray to God to remove original sin from this from this child. So don't let the word exorcism bug you. We do it every time we do a baptism. Okay, and then there are other ones as well, but those are what and not what you see in the movies. Okay. <laughs> Almighty and ever living God, who sent your son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil and bring the human race rescued from darkness into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you to free these children from original sin, to make them the temple of your glory, and to grant that your Holy Spirit may dwell in them. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So this first anointing is the oil of catechumens. And it goes on the child's chest, so I need to get access to their chest. And this goes back to the days of Roman soldiers. Combat was hand-to-hand -hand combat, so they would put oil on their bodies to keep from getting grabbed. So you can think of this as a shield on the child. May the strength of Christ, the Savior, protect you as a sign of this. We anoint you with the oil of salvation in the same Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> I bless the waters of baptism and I call down the Holy Spirit. This is just plain water that's been taken out of the tap, but our Sagersons made sure it's the right temperature to, for baptism. I ask you to listen carefully to this prayer. It's a beautiful summary of our salvation history. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water in your creation to show forth the grace of baptism. O God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice 
and a beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea, so that the chosen people, set free from slavery to Pharaoh, would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son, whose son, baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan, was anointed with the Holy Spirit, and, as he hung upon the cross, gave forth water from his side along with blood, and after his resurrection, commanded his disciples, Go forth, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church, and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image and washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old may be found worthy to rise to the life of newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. May the power of the Holy Spirit, O Lord, we pray, come down through your Son into the fullness of this font, so that all who have been buried with Christ by baptism into death may rise again to life with him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now we will have a renunciation of sin and a profession of faith. And this is very much in the same formula that we do in the Easter vision. Where you Dear parents and godparents, through the sacrament of baptism, the children you have presented are about to receive from the love of God new life by water and the Holy Spirit. For your part, you must strive to bring them up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and may grow in them day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, then, mindful of your own baptism, Renounce sin and profess faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which children are baptized. So I ask, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in death and was buried? rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. My parents and godparents, if you In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Oh, I know it's terrible. Wait till you kind of learn to drive. <laughs> Consecrated by the Archbishop right before Easter, and it's mixed with balsam, so it has a very nice sm smell to it. Okay, there's only a few times where we use the oil of chrism. At baptism, it goes on the crown of the child's head. At confirmation, the bishop will put it on their forehead. When a man is ordained a priest, it is put on his hands. 
so much so that the towel they use to wipe off the oil is put into a special box and given to his mother in honor of her son becoming a priest. And when a priest is installed as a bishop, it is poured over his head to where he's falling down into his beard and they actually put a drape around him to keep the oil from going on his clothes. This joins us by our baptism and our confirmation into Christ's role as priest, prophet, and king. So by your very baptism, you are called to be a priest. Well, what does a priest do? A priest offers sacrifice. The priests of the Old Testament were the only ones allowed to offer sacrifice in the temple. So raise your hand if you make sacrifices. Come on, everybody who's married, everybody who is raising children, everybody who's a student, everybody has to put up with people at work, or the people who cut you off in line at the, at the grocery store. We make sacrifices all the time. So next Sunday, when everybody comes to Mass, and you see that little family that brings the gifts up, I want you to think back over the week of the sacrifices you made and in your heart join those to the elements that they are bringing up and the priest will offer those sacrifices at the altar as well. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has freed you from sin, giving you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation so that you may remain members of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. see this white garment that I'm wearing? Mm -hmm. It's called an owl. It's the first thing that I put on before I get vested. And it's to remind me of the white garment that I received at my baptism. Okay? So we give each of the children a white garment. <laughs> okay. Has anyone been to a funeral lately? Anybody? So what do we do when your 99-year-old grandmother dies? We bring her casket in, and we bless her with holy water, just because every time she came into Mass, she blessed herself with holy water, and she went and sat in her pew. Her pew. Don't sit in her place. That's her place, I think. Right? So we bring the coffin to the front, and we point her feet towards the altar, because this is her normal position at Mass. And after, after a little while, they'll put this giant white cloth over the casket. That's called a pall. The same name for that little white card that we put on the chalice, a pall. To remind us of the white garment that she received 99 years ago when she was baptized. When I'm dead, they bring me in. They're gonna, Bishop's going to bless me with holy water. And he's going to point my head towards the altar because this is my normal position at Mass. And they will not put a white pall over my casket because I will be wearing my owl and my white vestments while I'm in the coffin. Dear children, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourself in... Put that back on. I knew the man was going to mess this up. <laughs> <laughs> Dear children, you have become a new creation and have clothed yourselves in Christ. May this white garment be a sign to you of your Christian dignity, with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring it unstained into eternal life. Amen. So can I have the godparents come up? 
Receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly, so that your children, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as children of the light, and, persevering in the faith, may run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. Don't, don't blow it out yet. <laughs> Parents, go ahead and everybody stand. This next prayer is a prayer of Ephesus. And this is when Jesus, this is an Aramaic word that Jesus used when he was a man deaf and mute. Dear brothers and sisters, these children who are born through baptism are now called children of God, for so indeed they are. Through confirmation they will receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and approaching the altar of the Lord, they will share at the table of your sacrifice, and will call upon God as Father in the midst of the church. Now in their name, and in the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, we have all received let us pray together as the Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So could I have the moms and dads and the babies? Bless the fathers of these children, so that together with their wives, 
they may by word and example prove to be the first witnesses of the faith to their children. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord God Almighty, who by water and the Holy Spirit has given us new birth into eternal life, abundantly bless his faithful here present, that always and everywhere they may be active members of his people, and may he bestow his peace on all who are here. In Christ Jesus our Lord, amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.